Hi everybody and welcome to Guild Wars 2 Summer Roadmap and July 19th Update Preview. In the June, 20, June 2022 studio update was mentioned that we would be back in mid-July to share our release roadmap from now through to the end of summer. We have that for you, plus a preview of next week's update. Let's go to it. Let's clock time chaos begin. Queen Jenna is preparing to wrap up her, her gala jubilee with notorious speech of her loyal subjects and visitors, but notorious villain Scarlet Bray has other plans. As a reminder, Living World Season 1 content is free for all players and permanently complete the original episodes and, and achievements and new achievements to earn. Sweet. World's best world boss, world's boss encounters are some of the most unique and I can't pronounce half these words. With each returning dozens of players to band together to pursue a common goal, defeating the baddie. They have excellent job showing, showcasing the high social and collateral gameplay of Guild Wars 2, which is known for four of these world bosses reside in low level starting zones and are the first large-scale encounters that new players experience as they venture into the world of Terria. These bosses were very first introduced nearly 10 years ago, and since then we have significantly raised the bar of encounter design standards. It is important that these encounters leave a strong first impression for new players and continue to be enjoyed by veteran players. So we have given each a bit, bit of love as we prepare for future launch of Guild Wars 2 on Steam. That's good, that's good news. In July 19 update, we'll be making some improvements. The Great Jungle Worm, Shadow Behemoth, uh, Sinvaeus <laughs> Shaman's Chieftain, I have butchered that, and the Fire Elementals. Uh, World Boss Event, our goal is to bring them up to our current design standards by adding Skill Telegraph and Defiance bars, improving the encounter mechanics and rebalancing health pools to accommodate the power level of modern professional builds. The Great Jungle Worm, Shadow Behemoth, and the Spherva Shaven Shaman will also receive a model on texture quality improvements, and uh, one champion loot bag will be added to completion of the reward. These changes will give players a better preview of gameplay and bosses encounters they will see during the future adventures in Terrier. Okay. Simpli simplifying the improvements of raid rewards. We are pr proud of our gameplay and in-game content like raids offers, but the previous high barrier to enter make it somewhat of a niche gameplay. There's a lot of opportunity to grow, the in-game PvE community and one of our goals this year has been to break down some of the barriers discouraging players from jumping into the content. We feel that it is important for future Steam players to see there's a healthy PvE community waiting for them at in-game. Okay, nice. We already have taken a few steps towards our goal in making raid content more accessible on June 7th. We made a special force training area more accessible to give players an easier way to practice for a content. On June 28th, we introduced the uh, embodied system, which gives new raids players uh, an easier on-ramp into the content as they learn the counter mechanics and their roles. These effects are already paying off as a wave of new raiders have stepped into the content and cleared their first wing, and many have, have even chosen to chain, to charge forward into later wings without an embodied to booster them. We would like to extend our gratitude to the raiding community f for, uh, for welcoming these new players in and helping them succeed. We have the best short shot of growing the end game PvE community with that. We work together, if we work together. In July 19th update, we'll be making some changes to the raid rewards to help address some long-standing pain points and reduce the unnecessary complexity of raid currency. All existing 
I can't pronounce that word, crystals, are being converted to uh, magnemite shards and I'm going to skip that word again. Crystals as a currency will be retired. The weekly magnitude shards cap will be doubled from 150 to 300 to account for the previous week's cap of crystals. All rewards that previously required crystals to purchase will cost magnitude shards instead. Uh, you'll still need to complete specific encounters to unlock uh, the accessory associated rewards but now you'll be able to work towards any item you want to purchase by playing any raid. They actually did their dungeons not too long ago. Additionally, existing legendary divisions are being converted into legendary insight and legendary insight are being converted from an item in your inventory into a currency. You'll now be able to purchase gift of com compassion and gift of power and scholar or from Scholar Gleaner, uh, once again butchered the name, at the same cost of previous mythic recipes for this item. Challenge Mode Rage rewards are also seeing a major update going forward. Completing any Challenge Mode Raid Encounter will award a bonus chest containing 2 gold, 2 provisioning tokens, 10 magnitude shards, a bonus experience and a random exotic item. This reward can be obtained once per week per encounter. The top tier tier ah oh, come on these words <laughs> achievement will be retired. We believe it should be easy to understand the path towards earning a reward, and players should feel rewarded for their time and effort they put into learning and completing raid content. Simple as that. Okay. So Stabilizing fractal instabilities. The mist slug sanctuary instability system is intended to keep fractals of the mist feeling fresh with each uh, instability, introducing a new twist that previously additional challenges when completing an encounter. However, some instability uh, instability combinations have a tendency to be more frustrating than challenging or fun. In July 19th update, we'll make an adjustment to nearly every mislock instability to reduce frustration difficulty sparks, uh, reward reward players for taking advantage of position players play opportunities and increase uh, synergies between instability across the board. A full breakdown of changes and design content for those will be waiting for you on release notes on July 19th. So here's what they're promising us for the roadmap. Nice quick little picture. July 19th, we'll see Living World Season 1, Episode 3, World Boss Improvements, Raid Changes, and Mistlock Instability Update. August 2nd, we'll see the Festival of the Four Winds and Legendary Weapon Skin Variant Balance Update. August 23rd, will be Guild Wars 2. 10 year anniversary. Nice, they've been doing for a long time. Yeah? Uh, September 13th, Live, Living World Season 1, Episode 4. Uh, we might still have a few surprises up our sleeves for the summer months. Okay, wrapping up on, July t on June 28th, we introduced the challenge mode of the Harvest Temple Strike mission without a doubt. This is the most difficult encounter that we have introduced in Guild Wars 2 to date after five grueling days and hundreds of raid wipes. All our streamers to thousands of viewers on Twitch, a group of 10 in the in the ah, going to give up. Raid succeeded at becoming the first in the world to overcome the challenges in counting. Congratulations to the Guild of Snow Crows for their monumentous achievement. We had a blast following the action on Twitch over the last uh, week as multiple groups race to claim world first. In case you missed it, you, c you can relive the last moments of, of Snow Crow's first clear here. Uh, there's a link there. Uh, this video is in English only and contains some exploits language. Uh, we'll see you in game, the Guild Wars team. Well, thank you for watching, the listening to me read the update. <laughs>